When Mara Jade made her debut in 1991's Heir to the Empire, Timothy Zahn provided the reader with her physical attributes, a slender woman with green eyes, red gold hair, and cat-like grace, but few details about her fashion sense. In chapter 19, Luke notes that she wears his lightsaber clipped on her belt. In chapter 21, she checks the tiny blaster hanging upside down in her sleeve sheath. Chapter 3 from The Last Command elaborates further with the revelation that she usually wore tunic slash jumpsuit outfits aboard ship. But for the most part, her wardrobe was left entirely to the reader's imagination. The first visual depiction of Mara came in 1992's Heir to the Empire sourcebook from West End Games. Alan Nunes gave her a long-sleeved, off-the-shoulder top, super high-waisted pants, and loads of tools on her belt. She has a very piratical vibe. Tom Jones' cover art for The Last Command in 1993 depicted her with French braided hair, knee-high black boots, and a camouflage jumpsuit. Released the same month, Mike Villardi's illustrations for the Dark Force Rising sourcebook revamped Nunes' initial vision. Mara's hair is now long and braided, and she wears separate pieces, trousers, loose-fitting top, vest, and low slung belt. Velarde also gave us the first rendition of Mara's light side outfit, with a side braid, asymmetrical shoulder spalders, and a large brooch. Velarde's illustrations in 1994's The Last Command sourcebook add more diversity to her wardrobe. Another version of John's camo jumpsuit, an oversized collar over a high-necked blouse, but you'll notice a common theme here. Sleeves. Even in Mike Butkiss's illustration from 1995's The Essential Guide to Characters, Mara sports a long-sleeved tunic or dress. What variety, what practicality, but then came the catsuit. Wikipedia defines a catsuit as a one-piece form-fitting garment that covers the legs and the torso, and frequently the arms. While the garment appears in film all the way back to 1915 to 1916's Les Vampires, the actual word catsuit only dates back to 1960. Think Honor Blackman and Diana Riggs's all leather ensembles in The Avengers. Although it's worth noting that Blackman's suit was a separate jacket and trousers, and Rigg disliked wearing her leather outfit, as well as the black lurex suits sported by Julie Newmar and Eartha Kitt in the Batman television series. Not even the comics were immune to this fashion trend, as the Black Widow was reintroduced in 1970's The Amazing Spider-Man No. 86 with shoulder-length red hair and a skin-tight black costume. From the 1960s onwards, cat suits were associated with superheroes and action women. The first issue of the Heir to the Empire comic was released on October 1st, 1995, and featured artwork by Olivier Vatin and Fred Blanchard as penciler and inker, respectively. Mara Jade enters the scene in a full-length, sleeveless leather catsuit with flat, knee-high boots, shin guards, knee pads, a belt with various pouches, a shoulder harness, an infinity scarf or detachable hood, and goggles. While the artists change for the comic adaptations of both Dark Force Rising and The Last Command, the leather catsuit remained her default outfit. We got some different subsequent depictions of her. Storn Cook's illustration of Mara in a professional-looking jumpsuit for 1997's Kraken's Threat Dossier. Two more versions of the green light side outfit from Lou Harrison's art for the Star Wars Finest Collectible Card Series, and Drew Struzan's cover art for Vision of the Future. Multiple outfits from the Star Wars Union comic. Addie Granov's unique version of her Emperor's hand garb 
from 2001's Rebellion Era sourcebook. But the catsuit became her trademark look. Mara Jade's appearance on the cover of Star Wars Insider number 47 in January 2000, as portrayed by model Shannon McRandall in, yes, a leather catsuit, further cemented this as her signature look in the minds of fans. Mara wears skin-tight black leather to differentiate her from Admiral Dalla or Tenennial Doe or Tenel Ka or any of the other red-headed women who appear in the expanded universe. But I have a confession to make. I hate the leather catsuit and I hate that it's become the only outfit that artists depict her in. Want an action figure of Mara Jade? Each one is wearing the catsuit. Scroll through Google Images and it's almost entirely catsuit content. I'm not entirely opposed to the catsuit, especially when it's styled like body armor. See the covers for Zahn's Allegiance or Choices of One. The bottom half is fine. I feel like flat boots and padding are well suited for action endeavors but I have to take issue with everything going on up top. Number one, most iterations of the catsuit omit sleeves, yet Mara notoriously conceals a tiny blaster on her person in a forearm sheath. Also, I imagine that no sleeves would be a downside in any combat situation, but what do I know? Number two, the infinity scarf slash hood and the small cape she's depicted with either seem far too fussy. She's a practical woman, so why not an attached hood? And for that matter, why is she wearing shoulder harnesses with nothing on them. Why are they empty? Why are there no holsters or anything? Number three, maybe this isn't an issue in the galaxy far, far away with all their wonderful space technology for fabric, but I would imagine that a full length leather bodysuit might be a little too warm for daily wear. And number four, Mara's catsuit doesn't fasten in the front, ergo it must have some sort of back closure. Not that you could tell from the comics or anything. However, as jumpsuit wearers in the 1970s learned, it's a lot easier to get in and out of your ensemble, particularly for personal reasons, if the closure is easily accessible. So. Artists of the Star Wars universe, please, I'm begging you, stop putting Mara Jade in the black leather catsuit. She's not even canon anymore, so widen your horizons and just put her in something, anything else. Put her in a long sleeve jumpsuit. Put her in quilted leather separates. Put her in Jedi robes. Put her in typical smuggler garb. Just put her in anything but that darn catsuit.